הלו תהיו, עמנואל שחף. לא, הלו. ג'ו ביידן, the American President and the Israeli President רובי ריבלין, they are meeting in the coming weeks, they're going to be the first meeting between Joe Biden, the Israeli Prime Minister, Bennett. What is your perspective of the new coming relationship between Israel and the United States? Uh, I think to, to a large extent we're, we're looking at uh, a, a relationship in waiting. Okay, it's of course based on great relations with, uh, with, between the United States and Israel. Uh, but the new administrations, both the American administration and, and our new uh, administration, have to uh, get used to each other. Uh, I, I don't think the U.S. administration is going to do anything to challenge Bennett at this time uh, for several reasons. First of all, they're busy with uh, many other things in the United States. They don't know what Israel is going to To do in the, in the near future so I think what the, what the US administration will do is lay the groundwork for good cooperation uh, in in the near future and we'll just have to see how this goes about so you're thinking that in the coming month the Americans are not going to put the Israelis and the Palestinians in the same room lock the door and tell them go out with a, a, a solution or an agreement De definitely not. Definitely not. They, they, they probably prefer to wait to wait and wait and see and also to, to, to some extent to, uh, to remind us and Palestinians that it's our problem and, and you know we have to solve it. And uh, if the Americans don't do anything, that also puts some kind of pressure on us because we know that they are there, you know so what's going to happen? After meeting in the uh, digital TV show, the Israeli minister Isawi Fridge. If you had the opportunity to meet the Biden administration and the president in the coming meeting, what would you tell them about the federation program? Well, I, I, first of all, I tell them that uh, we have to change the par paradigm uh, of the two-state solution, which is it's not, it's, it's, it's not doable anymore. It's not implementable uh, for many reasons. And I think the Americans are aware of it. I think most people who look at the situation are aware of it, but there, there is no apparent alternative or nobody's talking about alternatives. And the Federation is, is definitely uh, one of the better alternatives which, which should be discussed because it's, uh, it removes many of the problematic elements of the two-state solution. Uh, it uh, gives equal rights for everybody, it maintains Israel, Israel's uh, control over the area uh, while providing civil rights to all citizens uh, and so on and so forth like in, in every federation uh, and um, so the best thing the US administration can do is put it on the table uh, and not even suggesting that maybe we should do it but just talk about it. The, I think one of the problems is that alternatives are not being discussed and all actually uh, the Americans would have to do would to say, you know what, this is two, two states isn't any good anymore, let's talk about alternatives, we're not going to suggest anything, but this is, these are alternatives which should be talked about, that's all. Uh, and the Biden administration, um, if you could think about one main challenge that they may tell you in that meeting, one challenge that might be reflected according to this plan, to the federation plan? Uh, the biggest challenge, of course, is to convince uh, uh, both partners to take it seriously, okay, and to, to, to realize that this is something uh, that should be discussed as a serious alternative. I think the Palestinians are very much locked on their uh, two-state solution, they're, they're, they're not open to alternatives at this time, and the Israeli government is, is not open to anything in, in the respect that it li is very happy with the status quo, it thinks that the status quo can go on forever, and uh, the two-state solution, you know, we can talk about it, but uh, uh, it's, it's somewhere in the future, and hopefully never going to happen, and uh, let's not talk about other serious things. So when you're saying It could be remain this stay at home and do nothing situation. Yes, yes. Well, you are seeing also the uh, extremists in the right wing. 
also in the Israeli Knesset, but also on the field trying to provoke, trying to make a statement of yeah. we are the owners of the land, any land, also the Arab land near Jerusalem. So what is your perspective towards these kinds of effort? The extremists are always going to try to, uh, to sabotage any kind of progress. Uh, and the, the, the less uh, the, the two the, the, our, our government and the Palestinians are uh, devoted to solving the, in seriously, the problem seriously, uh, the more likely is that all these efforts are going to bear fruit. So there's a big incentive to do something. Uh, my government, the Israeli government, doesn't realize that at this time. Not only doesn't it realize, it's not in the situation politically to really do something about uh, it. It's, it's funny, in a way it, is, it understands that it has to solve it much more than ever before because we have Arabs in the government for, for the first time in a very, very long time. And it's uh, ever more uh, apparent that we cannot continue running this country without running it together with Arabs, with the Arab population. Uh, and uh, by, but at the same time, the the position of the coalition is so is relatively weak, so it can't do anything about it. Okay, even if it realizes it has to be solved together with the Arabs, the, this this particular government is not in a position to do it. So it's like uh, you know what's going to happen. And I think the U.S. government can contribute, but in the end, it's going to go back to the Israeli voter. Uh, once alternatives have been tabled. So you are saying that the first reasonable step would be for the American government and the Biden administration just to tell the, the sides, let's discuss, yes. let's open our minds, exactly. let's put another plan on the table just to think about it together. Right. Without it, ultimatums. Yes, with honor. And just to put it uh, to talk about it, because uh, uh, my feeling is that the, the population, both populations, uh, both the Palestinians and, and, and the Israelis, when looking at alternatives, and particularly the Federation, will uh, connect to it much better than, than to anything else which is on the table. Because it, uh, it makes life better for everybody, and it's apparent, it's, it's apparent that it will do that. Uh, so, and having been in negotiations with Palestinians on the one-state solution, uh, it's, it's interesting that both uh, we in Israel and the Palestinians uh, very much want pretty much the same kind of state. Okay, so to uh, make uh, to build a federation together is a, is probably going to be an easier job than splitting up the the country into two, into two different states. Uh, and that should be, you know, we should work on that. And as you were saying, with the Biden administration, but also bottom up, with the yes. people that are yes. really practically right. living here. Right. And the, the, the contributions that the Biden administration will, will be to put it on the table, and then uh, the grassroots will help uh, make, make sure that uh, governments take notice and, and relate to it seriously. Manuel Shachov, during this uh, interview, as you said, the first uh, Israeli, Arab-Israeli minister, uh, and also the coalition with the Arabs, the, uh, the party of Abbas, that are part, they are sitting there. It's a fragile coalition, but yet the Arabs are, the Israeli Arabs are part, part of it. Part yeah. of it. Manuel Shachov, thank you very much. Thank you.